Well, see, when those tense moments hit, those difficult places where our life is going off the rails, where things are jacked up, when, when maybe someone has sinned against us or we've sinned against other people or just circumstances that are just so tough for us to handle, in those moments, we find out what we really believe in. But remember what folk religions really are? It's when you take a trump card and you lay it down on top of your belief system and say, this is more important. It's what Jacob did. It's what Rachel did. It's what we do all the time. Let's think about feelings and emotions for a second. How often do we get to the point where we think we know God's will because we feel peaceful about something? I, I talk to people all the time. Well, I feel at peace with it. I am at peace with my decision. God has given me peace about this decision. And we use that as some sort of barometer to determine God's will. But feelings of peace are not a barometer of God's will. It's just sometimes our consciences have been seared. In 1 Timothy 4, it talks about these false teachers whose consciences become seared over time because they continue to sin in the same way. It's like when you eat a pizza that's like 2,000 degrees. You ever put a piece of pizza in your mouth? Guys typically do this more than women because women are smarter than we are. But we just, it comes out of the oven and it's like right into our face before it's even, you know, kind of, and, and then it burns the roof of your mouth and for a second it burns a lot and then it doesn't hurt anymore, but now you can't tell what's hanging down from the roof of your mouth. It might be cheese and it might be skin and you don't feel anything. You don't feel pain, you don't feel pleasure, you can't even taste the pizza anymore. A seared conscience is when you so repeatedly sin in an area that you no longer feel anything, including conviction on that area in your life. And it masquerades as a sense of peace. We use our feelings because in American folk culture, being at peace me being happy, me being satisfied, me being comfortable with this decision is more important than God's word. What about cliches? There's all kinds of cultural, religious cliches in our folk Christianity. Try this one on. God will not give you more than you can handle. And when people say that to you, they mean it to comfort you. They, 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 they mean it as comforting, but for those of us who are suffering, for those of us who are in pain, it's not a comforting thought because it does feel like we are facing something that we can't handle. In fact, when someone says that, they're really just misquoting 1 Corinthians 10. It doesn't say anything about God not giving you more than you can handle. In 1 Corinthians 10, it says, God, when you're facing temptation, will not give you a temptation stronger than you can handle. There will always be a way out of that temptation. And sometimes, this is a promise. Life will give you more than you can handle. And what the Word of God says is that in the midst of that pain, in the midst of that suffering, he is with you. This is, God will not give you more than you can handle. That's a folk religious trump card that doesn't jive with the word of God. In Philippians 1, I want to show you the difference between folk Christianity and Christianity from the word of God. Paul says this, I am sure of this. This is not about anything else but being absolutely certain. Paul says, you can be absolutely certain of this. I am sure of this thing, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion on the day of Jesus Christ. And so you've got guys like Abraham and guys like Jacob and people like Rachel and like you and me where it's taken so long for God to work in our lives and so long to mature us and so long for these difficult situations to show up in a way that we can comprehend and what you can be sure of. When you're suffering, when you are facing a temptation you think you can't handle, when you know the good that you should do, when you're facing end-of-life situations, what you can be sure of, what you can bank everything on is that God who began a good work in you will bring it to completion in Jesus. 